For some reason, the Laplace transform is often overshadowed by the Fourier transform. They are siblings, but with different backgrounds and personalities. The driving force of the Laplace transform, the thing that allows the engineers to avoid DEs and do algebra instead, is really because of the power of complex analysis. And the intuition to understand why the Laplace transform is how it is, and why the tools of complex analysis tie it all together, it only takes a few minutes to get to, and at that point, I hope I'll have inspired engineers and applied mathematicians to embark on a journey through the study of complex analysis. So it's all based around two ideas, encoding and unwrapping. Having this exponential in the integral is what allows you to link the transform of the derivative of the function to the transform of the function because exponentials differentiate to themselves and so you can do some fiddling or really integration by parts and this is what allows engineers to turn differential equations into just algebra. But there's got to be more going on here. I mean for the Fourier transform you have the nice interpretation of this decomposing your function into its modes and the motivation I hear a lot for this is that these exponentials give some kind of continuous eigenbases for the differential operator and somehow the Laplace transform is projecting the function onto one of these exponentials by doing something analogous to an inner product. But what does any of this really mean? How you should think about the roles of these complex exponentials is this. For each complex number s, well, where this integral converges, this integral is encoding a piece of data about the function. It's, it's not at all obvious what this data is, but it's encoding something as a complex number. And to get a better handle on what it is encoding, write the complex number in terms of its real and imaginary parts. And let's just focus on the real part first. So the real part is an exponential decay term, and when you times the function by this, and then integrate it from zero to infinity. The information you're getting from this is something to do with the nature of the function before the exponential really drops off, and that's a little bit vague. This piece of data is still quite muddled. All we can say is that this data point is placing emphasis of some kind on the earlier parts of the function, but you can see how if you change the complex number you're encoding with so that this exponential drop-off comes at different parts of the function, then we're gathering this kind of information about the function up to lots of different points. And so maybe you can start to feel how, if you know this data across a continuous range of these exponential decays, then maybe somehow you could unravel it and figure out what the actual function is from this encoded data. But that's just the real part of the exponential. If you focus on just the complex part, then similar to a Fourier transform, this is encoding some data telling you somehow about the function's similarity to certain frequencies of sinusoidal functions. But again, just having a few of these encoded data points feels very weak in terms of being able to work back to the original function you started with from this data. But again, if you knew it over a continuous range, then looking at this data across lots of different values and trying to work out the relationships, maybe you could see how you could determine whether the function has a certain genuine frequency or it just has some spikes that happen to coincide with peaks of a sine wave of a certain frequency. And so for a complex number, the full transform with both the real and imaginary parts in the integral is somehow encoding both data about the similarity of the function to certain exponential decays and also somehow the frequency profile of the function. But it's also muddled. From the engineer's perspective, the exponential in the integral allows you to solve algebraic equations instead. But when you've solved this, you've got this encoded data profile across some part of the complex plane, which is great, but this is of no use unless you can unwind this data and get back to an actual function. And it's not at all obvious that this is something you should be able to do, but this is where the power of complex analysis comes in. This encoded data profile is a holomorphic function, meaning complex differentiable, and holomorphic functions are very rigid. A lot of complex analysis is showing that holomorphic functions are rigid and deducing the really nice results that come from that. For example, just just knowing a holomorphic function on a tiny line uniquely determines it on a whole connected region. And what this means is that when you're trying to unwind this data, you've got access to the consequences of this rigidity at your fingertips, like deforming contours and using the residue theorem to just look at the poles, essentially the fingerprint of this encoded data profile. So even if you never touch a complex analysis book in your life, the next time you've turned off your brain to solve an algebraic equation, you can now instead think about what is really going on in the background that allows you to encode this way with exponentials, ultimately the thing that allows for the integration by parts fiddling end up with an algebraic equation, and how the ability to unwind this encoded data is one of the fruits from one of the prettiest trees in all of maths.